In this tutorial, we're going to talk about our trigonometric limits. And these are our two new limit laws. Um, basically, the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta is equal to 1. The limit as theta approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine theta over theta is equal to 0. These are just two new limits that you're going to have to get really well aware of and just kind of know by heart. So here's our first example. We're going to investigate the limit as h approaches 0 of sine 4h divided by h. Now what I can do here is some simple substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have this become theta. And I'm going to rewrite this so that I'm in terms of theta. So when we start writing our limit, instead of having h approach 0, this is going to become theta approaches 0. And then I'm going to have the sine of theta divided by what? So we've got to be careful with this. Because we have an inkling that we should solve for h. Since for h is now equal to theta, well, what would h be equal to? If we were to solve it out, we would get theta over 4. But keep in mind what this concept is. I'm simply trying to get this to get to zero. Well, that's what's happening here too. So I don't actually have to change my theta for my denominator here. So what we're going to do next to make sure that that four does come into play is it's kind of almost like it's a factor. It's almost like it's a, a multiplier of the first limit law that we have written over here in the left-hand column, that sine theta over theta is equal to 1. So to get that 4 in here, we can simply say that this is the limit as theta approaches 0 of 4 times our sine theta over theta. So that's also another way to think about this. If your theta or h or x has a coefficient and it's in the same form as our property right here, then you can say that that's sine theta over theta times that value. And that just takes some practice, but at this point, what we can do now is we can use one of our other limit laws and pull the 4 out into the front, just like so, which is going to give us 4 times 1, because that's what this entire part is equal to, which means that my limit altogether is 4. So let's take a look at one more. So here's another one. We're going to have the limit of x e approaches 0 of tangent x over x. And what's tricky about this is I don't see sine anywhere in here. So we actually have to change tangent. Um, it's not going to look anything like our second limit that's over here in the left-hand column. So I've got to try to get it to look like sine theta over theta some way, somehow. Now, I do know that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine, so that's where I'm going to start. So there we go. That's what that's going to become. And I'm actually going to make sure that x in the denominator becomes a fraction as well, so that now I can do my multiplication by the reciprocal and simplify this a little bit. So that's going to become sine x over cosine x times 1 over x. Now, if you look really closely at what we have here, I actually see that sine theta over theta. I see it here and here. All we have to do is rewrite our fraction so that that's exactly what I have. And what's beautiful about multiplication, since that's what's happening here, is it allows me to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. Now, I can evaluate the very first part that I have here since I know that the limit as I approach 0 of sine x over x is 1, which becomes this. So now all I really have to worry about is the limit as I approach 0 of cosine x, or 1 over cosine x. So when I go ahead and plug in 0 for my limit here, the cosine of 0 is 1. This becomes 1 over 1, which is actually my ending limit. So that's how you work sine theta over theta. You just have to keep converting it until you get something that works. So now let's take a look at our second trig limit that we have here. 
and, and try to see if we can work around that. So the limit that we have is that 1 minus cosine theta over theta is equal to 0, as long as theta is approaching 0. In the problem that I have here, I have secant theta minus 1 over theta. So we actually have to do some converting here. I'm going to have to change secant. And I know that secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So that's where I'm going to start. So this is what we have. Now, this does not quite look like what I need yet. So we have to still do some converting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 1 that's hanging out over here to the right. 1 over 1, and I'm going to get this to have a common denominator with the first fraction, 1 over cosine. In order to do that, I have to multiply both of these by a cosine. And what that is going to give me is 1 over cosine theta minus cosine theta over cosine theta. And of course, this is all over theta. Um, what I'm going to do next is combine my fractions in the numerator, and I will get 1 minus cosine theta over cosine theta, and this is exactly what I needed to see. If you look back at what we're supposed to try to get to, this is my 1 over, or 1 minus cosine theta over theta. I'm almost there. So what we're going to do is make our theta, theta over 1, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So there we go, and this is exactly where I need to be. So I'm going to rearrange this so that I have what I need. So 1 minus cosine theta over theta, which is exactly what I needed, times 1 over cosine theta. And what's nice about this is that this entire part right here is going to become 0. So I actually don't even have to evaluate this, really, because 0 times anything is 0. Now, if you want to double check to make sure that we don't get something that's um, indeterminate, if I do plug in 0 to this theta right here, I will just get a 1. So this is going to all become 0 times 1, which is the same thing as 0. So that is my limit there. So that's how we're going to work with our trigonometric limits, and that will conclude this tutorial.